Apologies, folks, I wasn't able to do the live transfer window because of all of the stupid snow around where I live. We're basically snowed into our town. The schools are closed, the roads are closed, all public transport is closed. I hear you. What does that have to do with you doing a live stream, Kev? You've still got the internet, you've still got the garage. Yeah, but it also means my kids are here. So I've snuck outside for an hour to record a couple of videos. I wouldn't have been able to stay out here for three hours to do a stream plus another hour to do. It just wouldn't have worked. So this is what I did on the transfer window. Hello and welcome to Club 5 Part 15 of Non-Lead to Legend. I'm Kevin. Coming up on today's episode, we're going to have a look through those summer transfers and we're going to play our first game of the season against Stoke. Now, hands up. I'm up there. No, not hands up. This, this isn't a stick up. I'm going to hold my hands up and admit this has not been a good transfer window and I'm going to say it wasn't my fault. Despite qualifying for the Champions League, the board have not given us any money at all to play with. A budget of £22 million that we managed to push up to 27 through selling some players. A wage budget that's gone from £3 million a week down to £2 million a week, which we're now a little bit over the £2 million, but still well under what it was when I first arrived. It seems they've given me enough oomph to go and achieve something and qualify for the Champions League and then pulled the rug out from under me and said, ah, but now you're there, you've got to do it on a budget. So we've really, really struggled and I've not helped myself with some some questionable transfers and it all comes down to the registration of homegrown players and all that stuff. It's stuff I know about, but stuff I didn't necessarily think about as I was making my transfers. So starting with the outs, Collett's left. He was an absolute disaster. What a waste of money he was. I think he was one of my first signings. Yeah. Paolo Oliveira, who's been at the club for a little while, um, was our captain, was a team leader. He's moved on. He was costing us 80 grand a week. I was trying to be financially prudent. We might regret that when you see what we've brought in to replace him. Ethan Galbraith, for similar reasons, really. He was never really going to be a regular in our team. I didn't buy him. He was he was there when I got here. I gave him his debut, though, because the previous manager bought him and then didn't play him. And Robin Fiegel has moved on as well. So we managed to raise £4.5 million. Pounds and spent... I mean, we've bought some good players. They're just good players in the wrong positions. They're players we didn't need, and they've caused problems when it comes to squad registration. Ignore Ben Cousins, who's just a guy who's come in on a freebie, and Callum East, same reasons, just come in on a free transfer. They're done by my head of youth development. They're, neither of them are very good. I haven't asked them to stop doing that. Uh, but the, the problem started with Matthias Moyer, who, on the face of it, looks like he's going to be a good player for us, a good signing. I looked at him and thought, hang about, 28-year-old Argentinian... Never left Argentina, but you look pretty good. And I was immediately thinking of Di Maria that we had at Bayern Munich last season. Oh, I wonder if he could come in and do what he did. He's cheap. I so only five and a half million quid. I'll have him. And he is going to come in and be our best attacking midfielder. So on the face of it, it looks like a good signing. But it then causes problems because he's not homegrown. It means we have to unregister one of our other players who's not homegrown. We'll get to them in a little while probably shouldn't have signed him. And also, by signing him, it meant that when Martin Odegaard became available on a free transfer like three days later, we weren't able to offer him enough money. And realistically, he wanted like £140,000 a week, which would have been pushing it anyway, but the only position he would have played is there. And I didn't want to bring in yet another foreign attacking midfield player when we already had um, Adonis, Almeida... Who else have we got who plays there? Onomar is English. Edwards is English. But we had a lot of players for that one position as it was. And we certainly didn't need to add more foreign players to the squad just there. Um, Velen Krasnicki. Another example of the squad causing me problems. The squad makeup. Because he looks, again, on the face of it, a decent signing. 21-year-old Swiss. Current international. On loan from the season, for the season from Man United. Two and a half star current ability. Four and a half star potential. Can't fit him in my squad because he's not English. So we've got him on loan for the year. We can't terminate the loan. I've tried. And we're just going to be paying him all year and can't play him because he won't fit in our squad. Evan Watts. This is another mistake. Not because, I mean, he look, he's a good player. 22 years old. Um, Three-star current ability. He's done a bit of a world tour throughout his career. Started at Air United. Liverpool signed him and they've been loaning him out back to Scotland over to Mexico for two years. He was in Serie A last season with Juventus. He looks like he's going to be a decent striker for us. I looked at his name and assumed he'd be English, so signed him. Realised he was American. He doesn't count towards our homegrown players. 
Another person had to be deregistered to fit Evan Watson to the team. Gareth Gasparetti is a superstar. He was signed on the basis of Portanova's probably leaving. Arsenal and Man City were both sniffing around him all summer. Um, we're probably going to have to sell him. Let's go get a like-for-like -like replacement. He didn't cost us an absolute fortune. He's £13 million. Any other summer would have been a good signing. He comes in to be our best central midfield player. As a signing, he's good, but what he does to the squad makeup, bad. We didn't need another central midfielder. If you look at that, um, who who our best central midfielders are, Gasparetti, Portanova, Suto, they're a bit good. We've still got Marco, we've still got Onoma, um, we've still got Storaro. We probably didn't need another central midfielder, especially when he's so similar to Portanova and Marco. Um, and then I realised I needed a defender. Diego Insua. We didn't have much money left. We couldn't afford much that was any good. He's two and a half star current ability. He's not the kind of player we want to be bringing in to start. But start he might. Because once we get behind Panzo, we've got Insua, Garmendia, who we signed last January and then loaned straight back out to Real Sociedad. And then Kostic, who we spent a lot of money on last summer, but he's still only 20. Didn't really impress when he got opportunities last year. And he's left-footed like Panzo is. So we've got three young up-and-coming defenders who might end up good. Panzo, who, to be fair, has gone and played all of England's games at the World Cup. So he's got some decent experience. He's been with us for a little while. But he's been used to playing with Oliveira. And he's now going to have to go from being the youngster alongside the established captain to the the old hand at 25 playing alongside a rotating combination of three youngsters who are not as good as him it's going to be a challenging season for our back four and then i did a panic buy and oh i, went, I initially went to try and sign danilo permanently who he had last year and had stopped playing um but he went somewhere else i forget where he went so we went and spent our last three million pounds on a 34 year old right back um he's got Tons of experience with Croatia. He is much better than our other right backs. I don't know how to say his name, so I will try to avoid doing so. Um, I'm sure you'll let me know down in the comments. And But again, the issue we have there is we've now got three right backs in our squad and two of them aren't homegrown. Aravalo and um, Ralston... We could, if if the homegrown thing wasn't an issue, I'd move Ralston on and have Aravalo in, being tutored by the new guy, getting game time every now and again. But Ralston's one of our homegrown players. We need him to make up our eight. I don't want to get rid of Aravalo because he can play as an attacking midfielder. He can play on the wing if we decide to use wingers. Every time he comes on the pitch, he looks good. But in order to get him in the squad, other players have had to miss out. And the two that are missing out can't believe I can't believe Adonis who was so important for us last season scored so many goals especially early on 15 goals from 20 starts last year but he's 29 he's only two and a half star current ability he's on a lot of money for someone who's not going to start regularly I assumed let's just transfer list him move him on nobody wants him so he's just going to sit being paid 140 grand a week, not in our Premier League squad. And then Alisson Almeida, who when I signed him, he was signed to much fanfare. Me saying how brilliant a signing it would be. Only 4 million quid. Look at all that potential. He's not come close to fulfilling any of it. And again, nobody... Well, actually, someone does want him now. We might be able to move him on before the European transfer windows close. But we're not going to get much money for him. And would I be better off with him or Moya? probably didn't need to sign Moya could have spent that money on a defender and kept Almeida I mean I could have kept avoided signing Gasparetti and Moya kept Adonis and Almeida in the team or in the squad spent some money I would have had like 18 20 million pounds to spend then to go and buy a proper defender to partner Panzo that's what would have happened in a proper transfer window if you had been there to support me and supervise me but unfortunately the stupid snow has ruined the series. It's ruined Leicester. It's all gone wrong. And this is the team we're putting out there to take on Stoke on the first day of the new season. We're going to try and be a bit more attacking. We're going to a control mentality. I don't know what to expect here. So we've got Spillar in goal. A back four of Leo, Panzo, Garmendia and... <laughs> Portanova, Gasparetti and Suto are in what looked... I mean, that's a world-class midfield three. You could pick that up and put that in any team in the world. And they'd be a good option so at least we're good here and just not good here 
Um, and then we've got Onomar in behind Watts and Miller. Um, Moya will probably take that spot fairly soon. But for now, Onomar was important last year. I don't want to just drop him like a stone. So let's get into the game. We Everyone else has already played. We're the Monday night football match on the at the start of the new season. So <laughs> we're already down in the bottom half of the table before it's, already, before it's even started. I expect we'll be spending a lot of time there. Oh, yes, we want to attack. Come on, lads. Let's let's see if we're any good. I want a performance from Gasparetti. I want Watts to come on and score a hat trick. I want our defence to look sound. I just want to be able to pretend that I didn't mess up that transfer window. I want to win six nil. Go back and edit that first ten minutes of the video to make it much more positive, and then we'll just go and win the league this year, and it'll all be fine. <laughs> Uh, Stoke have got the ball. Who'd have thought? Let's see if we're capable of defending. Because the, the one... The one. One of the big downsides, even at midfield three, there's not really much in the way of ball winning in there. They're three quite creative, skillful midfield players. Are we going to miss having the likes of a Storaro in there? They have just cut through our defence as if we didn't have a defence. That was our shiny new right back who's just got absolutely destroyed there. So that's the new right back. Way out of position. That's Garmendia. Doesn't know whether to come across and cover or stay in the middle. Doesn't really do either. And mm, I mean, that's the route I'd attack our defence as well. Down our right hand side where there's always going to be a weaker. Oh, I thought. I thought um, Gasparetti was going to score an absolute beauty there. But where there's always going to be a youngster at, at centre-back with an old man at right-back. So if you beat the old man for pace, you've then just got one of a rotating combination of kids to beat with Panzo desperately coming across to cover all the time. Our defence is going to be such a mess all season. At least what it means is I can't play the kind of football we played last year because we can't sit and soak up pressure and and hit teams on the counter attacks if we do that we're going to concede goals so by by <laughs> by my own incompetence in the transfer window i'm kind of forcing myself into playing attacking football we've just got to try and outscore teams the only problem is we're not looking like we've got anything going forward today either porton over though does grab an equalizer it's a beautiful finish that's his first ever goal for us i'm surprised he didn't score at all last season um but so, so Gasparetti's involved, new right back is involved, and it's a lovely finish from Portanova. Hopefully the first of many, because um, he's going to be playing a little bit more attacking this year. We've moved him over to be the Caradero. He spent most of last season as the deep line playmaker, except when Marco was in there and Portanova was out on the left doing a little bit more. But I'd, I'd like to see him get forward a little bit more and get a bit more out of him. Svila makes a save. About time too. I, mean, I can't blame Spiller for anything that's gone on so far. That was Stokes' first clear-cut chance and Spiller's made the save. So if he can keep that... If he saves every clear-cut chance all season, we might be in with... <laughs> we might stand a chance. Oh, right. Porton over again. What can he do? Gasparetti's in space, but instead he finds Suto over to the right back. Uh, Suto. I mean, we're knocking the ball across to the full-backs beautifully, but can we try and get the ball forward? Bit of penetration. Onomar just whistles by the post. And I think it might be time to bring Moyer on. And let's have a look at him. We'll give wait until the end of this highlight and we're going to make that change. Gasparetti over to Suto to Onomar. Watts just didn't... I mean, it just bounced back off of him. And it's back with Leo again. I, we're playing quite well, but we don't have much in the way of end product. It's... I don't know how I've managed to get to the point where we have a really skillful midfield that can keep possession, just sort of keep hold of the ball, play nice football, but we don't have a killer instinct up front and we're a bit porous at the back. So <laughs> it's probably not ideal. And Patterson, with his se was it his second or Stokes' second clear-cut chance of the game? I promised you a substitution. Let's make it. We're going to bring on Moya for Onoma. Um, Onoma's not played well at all, actually. It's like he knew what was coming. But we'll make our normal substitutions in a second as well. But I wanted to I want to have a look at the new boy. I probably should have started him after being so excited about him arriving, but I didn't want to bring too many new players in in one go. Gasparetti to Moya. Let's see what he's got then. Plays it out to Miller, 
who's come very deep and very wide, but crosses to Watts, and it's just wide. Was that a clear-cut chance? It felt like it should have been. I don't think it's gone down as one. Um, we're going to take Watts off now, and I'm going to bring on Cesar, and we're going to have a look at him. He's had a full season. Uh, full season. Uh, he's had a full pre-season for the first time since I've been here. He's fully fit. Let's see if he can start to fulfil some of that potential that he had previously. And make our final change. I guess we'll just start the conveyor belt of defenders to play alongside Panzo. Why doesn't he want to do that? What? I'm not having defensive centre-backs in the team. We're not in non-league anymore. Learn to play like a proper centre-back, Diego. Have we got a winner in us? Or is it more likely Stoke have got a winner in them? Right, ball forward towards Cesar. He's just kind of running around a bit. He didn't seem to put any pressure on at all. And now Stoke have the chance to come away with it. Can we get a tackle? And we do, and it's Gasparetti. Gasparetti's had a very good game. That was a bit scary, what he did there, dribbling towards our own goal. But the actual piece of defensive work was excellent Cesar though apparently that was brilliant play according to the commentary at the bottom of the screen I think we have slightly different opinions of brilliant Gasparetti's there again he's everywhere all over the pitch Portanova with a poor pass though and Stoke out ball over the top had acres of space for Cliver and he misses and I mean we've both had opportunities in these last five minutes or so to win the game but it looks like it's going to end in a draw which I guess is a fair result it is a little bit alarming to only draw at home to Stoke, who we were much better than last year. Hopefully, it's just going to be take a little while for the new players to bed in. And we'll see. At least we've got the Champions League to look forward to. And hopefully, before the season's out, a new job! I am going to constantly... Be, is there any new jobs available now? Of course there isn't. If you've enjoyed that, please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on there for me. Subscribe to the channel for daily Football Manager videos. And thank you very much for watching.